Trump forcefully arrested by police, an explosion at the Pentagon, the Pope in a Balenciaga puffer jacket, Kamala Harris in communist garb. What do all these images have in common? Well, they're all fake. But only one was generated and shared by attention-seeking twit-in-chief Elon Musk. So, is this a harmless joke, or is it something more dangerous? My name's Yuri Lepstein. Welcome to the Sanity Club. Elon Musk recently launched a Twitter assault against Kamala Harris in the form of an AI image depicting Kamala in communist garb. Under the image, he wrote a caption which said, quote, Kamala Harris vows to be a communist leader on day one. Can you believe that she wears that outfit? So first of all, let me just say that Elon is kind of an enigma. I mean, on the one hand, he founded companies that make some seriously cool things. You know, satellites, rockets, electric cars, holes in the ground. Okay, maybe the last one wasn't quite as cool, but his other products are legitimately impressive. But at the same time, since taking over Twitter, he has transformed the platform from, you know, just kind of unpleasant to an actual cesspool of hatred, anti-Semitism, Russian disinformation, and just general scams. And this isn't just because of his laissez-faire approach to moderation. He actually actively promotes a lot of this crazy stuff. So I don't think he was kidding when he put out an image of Kamala dressed in what I can only imagine is his version of communist core. I mean, even if you ignore the sinister phrasing or, you know, the lack of even a pretense of a joke, the image is actually in violation of Twitter's own policy on manipulated content. Not only is Elon breaking his own rules, but his accusation isn't actually based on anything real. Harris has never said that if elected, she vows to be a communist leader on day one. On the other hand, Trump has literally said that he'd be a dictator on his first day in office. Under no circumstances, you are promising America tonight. You would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. And that wasn't artificial intelligence. That was, you know, just no intelligence at all. And sure, you can disagree with a lot of her policies. I mean, let me be honest. I absolutely do not agree with a lot of the things that she says. But does anyone think that she is an actual dyed-in-the-wool communist? I mean, it's not like she's going around heaping praise on the likes of Vladimir Putin or um, you know, Kim Jong-un or Xi Jinping. Oh, hold on a second. Now, I could go on and on about how ridiculous Elon Musk's tweet is, or actually how ridiculous most of his tweets are. But the real danger is how flippantly the word communist gets thrown around these days. We as a country have been so oversaturated with this type of mudslinging that we have actually become numb to it. I mean, we've developed some kind of like boy who cried wolf effect when there are actual communists out there and when communism remains a very real danger. My parents actually grew up in the Soviet Union. Uh, looking over their shoulder anytime they heard or said anything that uh, Big Brother might not like. And, you know, they weren't afraid of somebody putting out mean tweets about them. I mean, they were afraid of the KGB coming, knocking on their door, and taking them away. Having been raised on stories of what actual life under communism was like, I can tell you that it's nothing like whatever the hell Elon Musk thinks it is. Communism is being forced to spend a month out of every year on a farm where conditions are so horrible that my mom took to drinking vodka straight out of the bottle because, you know, individual shots just weren't enough to mask the misery. It's waiting in long lines for basic necessities like toilet paper. And that's only in Moscow, because if you're literally anywhere else, well, you're probably sh out of luck. Maybe worst of all, it's ripping families apart. You know, I, I always think back to a story that my parents told me about how in just about every Soviet school across the country, they taught about a young boy named Pavlik Morozov, who was held up as a role model. If you're not familiar with Pavlik, he's kind of like a Boy Scout, except he earned a merit badge for narking on his parents for their anti-Soviet activity. And of course, his parents 
were swiftly carted away by the KGB to only God knows where. And Pavlik, for his bravery, became a young Soviet hero, orphan. So, you know, good job, I guess. If you take anything away from this at all, I think it should be this. If the left calls anything it doesn't like fascism, and the right calls anything it doesn't like communism, then nothing is fascist or communist. And if words lose their meaning, then we lose our ability to accurately describe actual threats to our freedom. Let's play a little game of true or false. Kamala Harris enjoys wearing a classy communist uniform on her days off. False. Donald Trump rejected the results of a free and fair election. True. Donald Trump is a literal fascist. False. So by hyperbolically accusing one another of being either communist or fascist, we're diminishing the experience of people, you know, like my parents, who actually lived under communism or fascism. And, well, I for one take offense to that. We can call a spade a spade without being needlessly hyperbolic. And that is what we believe in here at the Sanity Club.